moving list actually and there are big moves on both sides of the spectrum a uh, couple of names that i would like to point out as well which are which are actually doing well in a market like this something like a mahanagar gas which is up the last time i actually checked so that stock should be on your radar and uh, now let's talk about happiest minds because they reported a muted set of quarter three earnings with companies ebitda taking a hit while margin also contracted the company has maintained fy24 guidance at 12% My colleague Rima spoke to the MD and CFO of the company, uh, along with Joseph Anand Raju, who is the Executive Vice Chairman and CEO of Product Engineering Services, at the company, and began by asking Venkat about their guidance of organic growth. Listen in. Yes, uh, Rima, we we are holding on to the guidance as of now. Yes, we do realize that it means about four percent of growth that needs to be done in the next quarter on a constant currency basis. Um, And we have to also make up for you know the base effect last year we had uh, an acquisition in the fourth quarter. So yes, these two are to be taken into account. The the pluses are we had an extremely short quarter um, in Q3, 60 working days, and a little bit of furloughs and holidays. So with 63 working days in Q4, we are likely to make up for some of that. So the effort is on to uh, meet the 12%. But you know, like many other companies, we didn't give a range. We just said 12 percent. It was 11 to 12 percent. I think uh, this would not have been a question. But yes, the effort is the now and here is to make sure that we we try to hit that number. So you're saying uh, the new guidance is 11 to 12 percent? Was this 12 percent earlier? No, it is 12 percent. Okay. It, it is 12 percent. We are holding on to that, and uh, we try to see how we can do on that count. Uh, Joseph, you know, we were chatting with LTI Mindtree, uh, and they indicated that the furloughs in Q3 were deeper and wider than what they were anticipating. Talk to us about what we've seen in the quarter gone by. Uh, I would say that uh, you know the furloughs uh, for uh, Q3 were uh, for a little longer period than we've uh, experienced uh, uh, earlier. I think the furloughs started probably a week earlier than we've seen, and uh, Venkat also alluded. Uh, to follows being one of the reason why our uh, performance was a little lower than what we would have expected to be in Q3. On the other hand, what we've seen is all the uh, follows that we had, they got regularized and people were back on their assignments by uh, early Jan. And as of today, we don't have anybody who's on follow, which is the uh, the positive part of uh, uh, of this whole thing. Mm. Uh, and what about EduTech? That's your largest vertical with a revenue contribution of 24 percent, and that has seen a sequential decline. Uh, is it purely on account of furloughs, the decline in EduTech, or is there any other reason? So, you know, if you look at it, I'll give the answer on a couple of fronts. If you look at EduTech, there are three, four sub-segments: uh, higher ed, K-12, uh, workforce development, and corporate learning. And higher ed continues to be a little soft. Uh, you know, one of our customers. And, uh, the, Uh, so that is uh, at a systemic level, but specific to Q3 performance, one of our customers, a large tech company, uh, they sold a part of their business, uh, and the product that they divested was the product that we are working on. There's been a little bit of uncertainty uh, because of the divestiture, and as as a result, part of the team ramped down, and we are looking at how to bring this back, working with the company that has acquired this product because there's been a Uh, uh, a period, a great period, when the divestiture has happened, and when the company that's acquired these products, they get started off. We're hopeful that we should be able to regularize, uh, you know, this uh, drop off in the next couple of months. Mm. Uh, Venkat, high tech and BFSI has recovered for you after a soft Q2. What led to that, and have we seen the worst of uh, BFSI and high tech from an industry point of view? So, if you look at, I'll take that. Uh, you might look at BFSI. I think what helped us out in the quarter was one of our larger customers in this space. Uh, the the initiative that we're working on, there uh, uh, the two initiatives that we're working on with them. One is modernization, the other one is on their data analytics space. And both of those, you know, they wanted uh, to to release new features or products to their customers. And as a result, there was an uptick during uh, Q3. We hope to see a similar uptick. We have quite a few customers in the BFSI space. That we are in discussion with, both uh, in, you know, cutting across geos, in fact, India, Middle East, and in US. So we hope we are hoping that some of those would uh, convert. On high tech, while the revenues, you know, have been uh, look stable, I think the segment as such is still being very cautious. 
and uh, you know the, the the number of opportunities or uh, discussions we are having in that space is not at the level that i would have expected and we expected to still continue to being uh, to be flat uh, is the prognosis that we have for high tech uh bank at any green shoot in discretionary spending corporate behavior uh, decision making cycle i know it's been a tough you know calendar year 2023 for the entire industry but as we enter the new year are there any green shoots i believe uh, during this period we would get to know about our budgets for the next year but uh, like joseph was mentioning you know, as we go and talk to customers which most of it, the business people are doing we are getting a feel that things are getting slightly delayed so that's the sense that we are getting but they are back into spending given the way the us economy is now slowly you know, I, I, i can't say limping back to normal but at least uh, this now uh, apparently uh, the soft landing has happened and uh, there is no more recessionary talk and the, the interest rates and inflation are stabilizing so as a largest market uh these are things that our customers are taking into account and uh, looking at the numbers going forward as far as the indian market is concerned that is showing real good growth in line with what we are seeing in the economy and as the market after us that's the second largest market for us and that is showing decent traction with uh, at least three or four of the new logo sign outs that we have done this year coming from india and from uh, verticals like manufacturing and industrial which are going well for us. Mm. And what about acquisition? We've been waiting for an acquisition from you. Is it likely in Q3 or is it going to be pushed forward to H1 of FI25? We have a decent pipeline right now. We're in discussions, deep in discussions and the you know the idea is to close something which which makes sense for the company is aligned integrated uh, with what we are doing for our customers. So we are in discussions we have a decent pipeline. Uh, name getting added uh, you know just like uh, discussions with customers sometimes uh, discussions with uh, prospect and targets also take longer than usual that's what we are seeing right now uh, but we are in active discussions and hope to come back to you with uh, good news uh, this quarter of early q1 and one final word joseph 20 to 22% margin guidance does that stay uh even going ahead you've been beating it for the last i think 14 quarters now in a row uh, but is would you like to revise it higher i think we would like to stick to the 20 to 24% uh, uh margin because uh, uh you know we we want to give ourselves a little bit of flexibility to make investments where they are required and uh, you know uh, as we mentioned in our press release we are we've initiated several strategic initiatives around Uh, creating the generative uh, business AI business unit that we talked about last time, and we want to make sure that we invest appropriately. We've got very good traction already. We have around 25, 30 customer conversations that we've had. We've had uh, several POCs and consulting assignments that have already been kicked off, and we've got a good team in place uh, that we've trained. We have the NN sales team that we are creating, which will act as an engine of growth, but will need a little bit of uh, investment upfront. and again you know we are getting into virtualization and all of these we want to make sure that uh, you know we don't short change any of these initiatives so we'd like to reach that 22 to 24% uh, you know uh, uh, guideline with the ex- hope that we will continue beating it as we have done for the past 15 or 16 quarters well that was the management of happiest minds the stock taking a bit of a correction almost 4 and a half percent low after posting a soft q3 But let's now slip into a short break. On the other hand, Samit Chauhan of Angel One joins in with some technical analysis.